All right. Well, <clears throat> um, so glad that you're here. Uh, I want to talk for a minute about the perfect gift, um, and that we believe is Jesus. I was uh, watching the uh, Christmas story. Anyone, any fans of the movie A Christmas Story? Okay, all right. I was watching A Christmas Story the other day, and uh, uh, I really relate to A Christmas Story. It, it's one of my favorite Christmas movies. My family, not so much, but me, yes, so I make them watch it. Anyway, but um, it's uh, in the story, I guess the reason I love it so much is I relate to Ralphie. Ralphie is the main character. Um, he's about nine years old. And Ralphie wants a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. And there's something about that age and just watching him and the wonder, you know, and that, that, that desire he has for this. Um, in fact, like he kind of has this mind, he goes into these little dream sequences all the time about what life would be like if he had that. And I remember that. I remember being at an age thinking, Wow, what would it, what, it'll be so awesome when I have, if I get this thing, it's going to change my life. And I remember kind of buying into that uh, with different Christmas presents. When I was seven years old, it was a shoot 'em up alley. So these little bad guys would come out of these little doors and windows, and you'd have this rifle, and you'd stand like 10 feet back, and you'd shoot it. I think it was like a light-activated thing, and I think... Literally, if you were within about a foot and a half, you shot them. You know, it was, it was kind of lame, but, but it seemed so cool. And I couldn't wait to get it, and I played with it for about four days, and then I think it broke, and I never played with it again. Um, the, another, when I was 10, I'm going to really date myself now. I wanted the Odyssey video game system. Anyone remember the Odyssey video game system? There's me and Wade, and that's it. Um, yeah, because everyone else had Atari because it became the cool one. But, but for, the, for, the, for the 20 of us that bought the Odyssey, it really seemed like it was going to be the thing. And I couldn't wait to have that Odyssey video game. Then when I was like 12, there was this game called Stop Thief. And I remember just thinking, oh, I want to have that game. And then when I was 14... I wanted a Sony stereo. I'd had a cheap stereo. Remember the, if you're there again dating myself, the Magnavox or like sound design stereos where you like the, you'd open up the speaker would be this big and then you'd open up and there'd be a little speaker like that big in it. Um, I had one of those, but I wanted to up it. I wanted a nice stereo with like 12 inch woofers and all that kind of thing. So I'd, I had to save my money for half of it. And uh, my, grand, my parents helped me get that for Christmas. And I couldn't wait to get that. Right? Well, things have come full circle. I'm now 53, and guess what? I want another stereo for Christmas. Um, <laughs> I just, I want, I want to go back and be able to have records again and have music that's actually like something physical. So I want to get another stereo for Christmas. But you know what? All those things fall short. Every single one of those things I ever got, every one of them ended up in a dumpster. Whether it be a week later, six months later, or 10 years later, they just didn't last. And even now, being my age, well, I really want the stereo, I still know eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to go the way of the dinosaur, right? Um, in fact, I kind of had in my head, I'm like, well, I'm going to get this record collection, and my kids, will, I'll pass that on to my kids. And then my son reminded me, Dad, we only literally like, like, one twentieth of your music, so like, like they're not gonna listen to it, right? In fact, my grandfather, when he died, he had thirty-five thousand records. Um, that he had a huge collection, lined his whole garage. And I remember thinking, "Wow, that's really cool," but it just got to a point where it was just so much. And you know what ended up happening to almost every one of those records? Almost every one of them ended up in a dumpster. Um, it was the kind of music, a few of my, my cousins and I, we all took a few, my, my, our parents took a few, but, but most of them ended up in a dumpster because that's the way so many gifts go. They fall short. But we love to give gifts, especially at Christmas, don't we? We love to give Christmas gifts. And there's a lot of reasons for that, that we do that at Christmas. Let's face it, I think, honestly, if we're being really honest in our culture, a little bit of the reason we give so, so many gifts is materialism. We're kind of a materialistic culture. Um, if you go to other cultures, they don't give, most of them don't give the, the level of gifts that we get in our culture. <coughs> um, but there's some really great reasons why we give gifts. 
Um, there's the tradition of the wise men, right? The idea that the wise men brought Jesus uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they presented him with gifts. Um, there's the tradition of St. Nicholas and all that he represents, even going back to um, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, um, the things that he had done. But ultimately, it's because of Jesus. Ultimately, the reason we give gifts at Christmas is because Jesus inspires us to give because he was the greatest gift ever given. He was the greatest gift. And so we're inspired to, to give little tokens, if you will, of love in compared, comparison to what he gave. I mean, Christmas is the season that we celebrate that God the Father sent God the Son to be born in the most humble of circumstances in a manger. In fact, Pastor Dana hit on this a little bit last week that, you know, the manger didn't look probably anything like this. First of all, those three guys on the other side, they didn't get there for a long time. Um, and if they went to the manger, it was empty because they were all moved by then. But um, so, it, you know, but it was, it was a dirty place. I mean, I don't care if you have a barn. I don't care how nice you keep your barn. I'm not talking about a wedding barn, people. Just so you know, that's a different thing. Um, and people are like, oh, barns are lovely. No, they're not. <laughs> but a real barn is filled with urine and feces and fleas and, and rats and all sorts of bugs. And the straw is filled with bugs. And Jesus was laid in probably rags and on that dirty straw. And yet, he was the greatest gift ever given. But it wasn't about the wrapping. It was about what it was, what it meant for Jesus to come for us. That he came, that he gave his life so that we can have eternal life through his resurrection for anyone that will choose to accept that gift. And that got me thinking about, well, why, why, what is a great gift? What is the perfect gift? Jesus is the only perfect gift, but what, what, it, what constitutes a great gift for someone? Well, I think first thing is, it's great to get something you actually need, right? Um, you know, if you're into a hobby and you've been wanting, wanting for something for that hobby, um, but you haven't been able to get it, to get that, is, and it, it's great because you're like, oh, I, I really need this for this thing. Well, you know, the Bible says in Romans, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody. You know, it's amazing to me how many people think that they can have salvation by being good enough, by setting some standard of being moral or, or good enough to achieve God's standard. If that were the case, the whole point of Jesus is meaningless. There'd literally be no reason for Jesus. Jesus is something everybody needs. Another thing that makes a gift great is when it's something of value. Yeah, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I love to bless somebody sometimes with, with something I know that they couldn't get on their own. We've been, my wife and I have been very fortunate to have friends who have blessed us that way, um, who will, will give us a, a gift that we, we just can't go out and buy, maybe necessarily, especially in our younger years. Um, but we like to now, we're at, we're at a place where we feel like we can do little things. So one of the things we like to do is with our, our young married kids, um, we know that they're kind of at a, they're at a place in life where going out to eat, even if it's for a burrito, is, is kind of hard, you know, and they, they don't use credit cards, and so they use, they spend their money wisely, and, and that means they can't really go do stuff. So we like to every once in a while just take them to a nice dinner, you know, something just kind of nice that we know that they wouldn't be able to go do because it's a blessing to give something of value to someone. 
One second Corinthians, Paul says that he says, thanks be to God for the, his inexpressible gift of Jesus. The inexpressible gift. It's, it, the gift is so valuable that it's inexpressible. Jesus is the gift that no one, no matter how wealthy, no matter how good, no matter how religious, can afford. And then third, a gift should be something that shows love. Right? We, I mean, uh, to me, there's really no greater gift than the one that really shows love, that somebody put a lot of love into it. Some of you people, are your gift giving is a, is a love language of yours, and you're great at going out and choosing a wonderful gift for somebody um, and putting time and effort into that, and you show and express your love through that. Well, the Bible says in John 3, 16, most of us know this passage, whether or not you go to church or not. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. See, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. He gave his son to us because he loves us. God loved us enough that when we had to do nothing, he had to do nothing for us, and yet he had a plan that required nothing of us and everything of him. That's showing love. Jesus gave up his throne in heaven to begin a life in these lowly circumstances because he loves us. Ultimately, he gave his life for you because he loves you. Jesus loves us. Well, there's a lot of great gifts we can give. But, you know, even to, to, when we give a gift, in order to, for it to be of any benefit, the person that it's given to, they have to receive the gift, don't they? Right? See, there's some, most of you can't see. Next year, we'll have an actual stage, and you'll see. Um, but there's, there's a, a bunch of presents under this tree. If those, they're not real, just so you no know, kids come up and grab them afterwards. Um, they're just fake. Um, but but they, um, if, the, if a, they're the real presents, and they're under a tree, and they just get left there, they serve no value, right? They, they're, they're, they're no value, no matter how much you spent on it, no matter what you did to prepare for it, no matter, no matter how much love you put into it, if the person won't receive the gift, then that gift has no value. For a gift to be the perfect gift, we have to open the gift. We have to receive it. Each and every one of us have been given a gift. But we have to choose whether or not we want to accept it. It's the perfect gift. And yet, did you know the Bible says that most of the world doesn't want it? Romans 3.11 says, no one understands, no one seeks God. And I know that's true in my life. I wasn't a young man looking around going, you know what I want most in my life? I want God. I want God most in my life. No, I wanted a lot of other things besides God. You know, I wanted girls. I wanted money. I wanted you know, a nice car. I wanted a great job. I wanted to get a job that was going to make me lots of money. I wanted a lot of things. But I wasn't for just chasing after God. God was chasing after me. And I feel like oftentimes we're like that little kid at Christmas time that gets something that, was, that so much love was put into but doesn't appreciate it. Um, some of you ladies probably knit or or so, or do, do something like that where you make gifts. Um, I had a few uh, people in my life who would do that. And I remember, I feel, I feel horrible for these, these ladies now because I was that, that kid that just didn't even have the couth to pretend I cared, you know? Um, so, you know, at Christmas, I wanted the cool next shiny thing. And, you know, I had to get an aunt or a grandma who would knit me this Really nice sweater. I don't know if that's what it is. It's a knitting. My daughter always is like, one's crocheting was, I don't know what it is, but she made me a sweater. You know what I mean. So she, she would put all this work into a sweater or something, and I would just open it and look at it and go, eh, right, and move on. I wanted the next present. 
I wanted the shiny thing. I wanted the thing that was going to have lots of bells and whistles. I wanted the thing that, that was going to offer me immediate satisfaction. And I put no care into how much love was put into it because I was always seeking after the fun thing. We'd look at it and throw it aside. And I think there's a lot of people when it comes to relationship with Jesus Christ, they look at it, they consider it, and then they throw it aside because they want to chase after something else. They want things that are going to fill holes right away. They want things that are going to make them feel good. Want things that are going to make them uh, have what, what it is that they're looking for in the short term. I would just challenge you and encourage you tonight. If God's all working on your heart, I would encourage you to open the gift to receive it this Christmas. Don't leave it under the tree. Don't leave it and do nothing with it. He's given every one of us the gift, but we have to choose whether or not we want to receive it. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you are a God of love, that you love us so much, and you put so much effort into your gift for us. In fact, you did everything. We've done nothing to deserve the gift, and yet you give it out of your great love for us. God, it's a gift that is invaluable, and it's a gift that we all need. And we thank you for your heart that desires to give it to us. In Jesus' name.